YouTube channel. So today we're going to be focusing on something called a difference in differences model. So you should see this quite a lot in econometrics, particularly more of an intro econometrics. Now, when would we use a difference in differences model? So the re really good time to use them is if a policy or something has come into effect. So either a policy or maybe something hasn't been built, which is the example we're going to do in a minute. And you have data before this happened and after this happened. And a difference in differences model basically helps us to quantify the effect of that. So the example we're going to do is actually shown in Wardridge, because I know a lot of econometric classes uses the Wardridge book. And it's all about an incinerator being built and how has that has had an effect on house prices. So what we actually have is we have the information that an incinerator was built in 1981. But we have the data on house prices in 1978 and 1981. And we want to see how has this incinerator being built affected house prices. Now, what typically tends to happen with students is they think, well, brilliant, I can go and run a regression on 1981 data set and see what the effect of the incinerator is. So this is what typically tends to get run is this thing in blue here, this regression here. So we've regressed price on um, near incinerators. This will be a dummy variable, so it'll be one for the people that live next to the incinerator. And obviously the way this will be interpreted is that if I live next to the incinerator, then on average, um, price falls by 30,688.27, uh, let's say it's pounds, in comparison to the people who do not live near the incinerator. So if students then think, brilliant, that's the effect that the incinerator has. Problem is, that's actually not quite right. Because we need to think about, well, hang on, what would the effect be if they lived in that area before the incinerator was built? Because obviously, even though here it just says near incinerator, we can have those people living in that area without the incinerator being there. So what we could go and do is we can go and run the regression in green instead, which is on the 1978, so this is when the incinerator hasn't been built. And when we go and look at that, we actually see that living near the incinerator or living near that area, because it doesn't quite make sense to say that you live near an incinerator when it's no longer there. It also says that it has a negative effect on house prices, which actually leads me to understand, well, the incinerator itself isn't having that effect more than anything. It's the idea that maybe it's a poor area. So they put that incinerator in that area anyway, because it is a poor area. So house prices, um, tend to be lower, or maybe it's a bad area, so house prices tend to be lower. Therefore, neither of these regressions actually tell us what the effect the incinerator has had on um, house prices in that area. So what we need to go and do is we need to go and do something called a difference in differences model to be able to go and implement that effect. And I'm going to explain to you what that is. Shown here is what a typical difference in differences model looks like. So I know it sounds confusing, but all it is is a regression where we include a certain variables. And once you've learned it, it will follow the same layout for any difference in differences you want to go and undertake. So earlier on the whiteboard, I showed how we needed to take into account the years prior to the incinerator being in existence, because we found that before the incinerator was in fact, effect, if we lived in that area, there was still a negative effect on house prices in comparison to other areas, which then meant that if we went and looked at our regression in the time when the incinerator was built, it also came out as a negative effect. And obviously that is picking up the effect that just being in that area alone has on house prices, not solely the effect of the incinerator. So as we want to know what the sole effect that this incinerator has had on house prices, that wasn't something that we could use. Most students then think, well, why can't I just minus the two numbers? You can't do that because the effect of just being in that area would vary over time anyway. So what we really care about then is time. So in a difference in differences model, you always include a time dummy and that's shown here. So I've called it T81, but obviously you can call it what you like. So it takes the value of one in the years when the policy, or in this case, the incinerator is in effect and zero otherwise. Obviously in our case, we're only dealing with two years, but it could be loads of years. So obviously 1981 onwards would be coded as a one because the incinerator's there and anything before 1981 would be a zero because the incinerator has not been built. 
Again, you need to generate this dummy yourself because data sets will just tell you the year. So then it's up to you to go and generate a new variable and code it one or zero, depending on what year um, that row of information is. Next, what we really care about is the people that are living near the incinerator. So this is what we call our treatment group because they are going to be affected by this incinerator. Obviously, it really does vary how you determine who gets affected by this incinerator, but let's just say we are told that people that live within a kilometre of the incinerator are affected negatively or some, or just affected. So then it would be a one for all the people that live within a kilometre of the incinerator and a zero otherwise. So the zero for people that live further away. This is another variable you'll need to generate because your data set will just give you information on how far away they where they live, not it wouldn't have coded it for you. It doesn't have to be something like this. Let's say it's a policy coming into effect and let's say this policy is affecting companies, but it only affects uh, companies of a certain size. Then you would label them a one if they're that certain size and then obviously a zero otherwise. So hopefully that's quite straightforward. And then ever so lastly in a difference in differences model, what we care about is we care about the fact that I am living near the incinerator, so I'm, I'm being affected and it's the year where it's in effect. So all we're doing there is what's called an interaction term and that's shown here and we just multiply those two dummies together. You can probably see in light grey here I've done plus beta 4 hat brackets x4. It's in grey because it's actually not important to understand the difference in differences model but all this means is that I appreciate that there's going to be so many other variables that impact price other than just this incinerator and time. So for example, let's say house size that has an effect on price and we're just going to control for those variables. So this is just any variable that other also could affect price that we would need to have included but it's not the crux of the difference in differences model. Okay, so then you're probably thinking that's all well and good, but I still don't understand where I would look to get the sole value for where the incinerator alone is causing effect on house prices. And this is where this table is going to come in handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what variables would stay in when we have each scenario. So in this box here, we're saying that near incinerator is zero, so I'm not close enough to the incinerator to be affect affected, so I'm in the control group, and T81 is zero, so actually it's before the incinerator was built. Well, if, near, if T81 is zero, this is zero here, well zero times anything is zero, so this drops out of my equation, and near incinerator is zero, so beta two also drops out of my equation, so all I'd be left with is beta naught, Let's have a look down here. So T81 is zero, so again, that drops out. Near ink is one, so this stays in this time. So beta naught hat stays in, and so does beta two hat. So we're left with that. Let's move over here. We've got T81 being one, so this time beta one hat will stay in my model. Near incinerator, beta two will drop out. So we're left with the following. And then ever so lastly, we've got one one, which means actually they all stay in which means we have the following. So now we've got that, this is where the real name difference and differences come into play. So I showed you earlier, it was so important to take into account what was happening in the time period before the incinerator because we appreciate there's going to be some effect on house prices regardless of, of whether or not the incinerator is there. And as we can see, there's these columns here, and these are our time columns. So obviously this is when our incinerator exists and this is before. Well, we want to essentially cancel out the effect um, that of house prices before the incinerator is built because we don't want to be taking that into account because by the end of it, we just want the sole effect of the incinerator. So the way we do that is we're going to difference across time. So we're going to take these two minus this. And if I do beta naught hat minus beta one hat, I obviously get beta one hat. And again, I'm going to difference across time here and beta naught hat and beta two hat cancel out. So I'm left with beta one hat plus beta three hat. So now I've accounted for time. What I need to account for is group because all I want to know is the effect of being near that incinerator. So being affected by that incinerator. So I'm going to cancel out the effect that I'm in the control group. So I'm going to difference across groups. And as you see, when I do that, I'm left with beta three hat. 
So what that means is by running this model, if I want to know what the sole effect the incinerator is having on house prices, I need to go and look at what beta three hat is. Whatever that number comes out is, is the effect of house prices. And this is what we typically tend to call our DID, terrible writing, DID estimator. And this is the same for all difference and differences models you run. So you do not need to go and do this table every time. I've just done it to be explicit. You will always care about the variable that's on your interaction term. This will always be the one that will give you the sole effect of the either policy or in this case, the incinerator. So I hope that has made some more sense to you and difference and differences models are now not so scary.